Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from KISS. Feliz Navidad, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas from KISS. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! I'm wishing everybody a really Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Someone stole Santa? That does not rock! What's going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another episode of 25 Days of Kissmas, where every day leading up to Kissmas, I will be reviewing and discussing every Kiss Studio album plus more. For the fifth episode, I will be reviewing the Rock and Roll Over album from 1976. The experience of working with Bob Ezrin on Destroyer definitely got the band out of their comfort zone, and the album would have flopped if it wasn't for a hit single like Beth. While this brought on good fortunes, it certainly alienated a portion of fans who preferred the more darker, hard rock sound of their previous records. So what do they do? They bring back Eddie Kramer, who had produced their 1973 demo as well as Kiss Alive and the end result is an album that brought back the band to their roots and made their old school fans feel right at home. So let's dig into the album. Side one, track one, I Want You. Written by Paul and opens with some subtle acoustic guitar, which is an interesting way to kick off a Kiss album. Power chords are summoned, the band kicks right in, and the song is in full swing, and it sure packs in a lot of power. Paul also plays the first half of the guitar solo, and this song was also released as a single in South Africa. Track 2, Take Me, a collaborative effort between Paul and Sean Delaney, who was an integral part in early history, having had a hand in choreographing early stage moves, being a roadie, driver, and ultimately co-writing material for the band. And lyrically, we are introduced to a new lustful female character named Lucille, and it tells the tale of a sexual escapade. Track 3, Calling Dr. Love, a gene composition from which he was inspired by the tagline Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard from the Three Stooges short Men in Black. One can say this song is a composite since Gene usually did this thing where he would borrow elements from songs he wrote to create something new. So musically, this stems from a demo called Bad Bad Lovin'. Lyrics from that song along with another demo called High and Low were also utilized. This is another signature Gene song along with God of Thunder. So depending on the moment, he's either that or Dr. Love. The song went on to be the second single from the album as well as a stage staple. Track 4, Ladies Room, another Gene song which germinates from a demo called I Don't Want No Romance. It can be seen as his version of Paul's Do You Love Me. Also, I love how Paul introduces the song live with the stage rap. For some of you girls who want to get yourselves kissed, meet us in the ladies room. Track 5, Baby Driver. This is another Peter and Stan Penridge tune that was recorded by one of Peter's pre-Kiss bands called Lips, which was formed from what was left of the band Chelsea, who had demoed an early version of Beth. The song is about his bassist Alfa Romeo sports car, and since Peter had the co-writing credit, he was automatically elected to sing lead. But for those that are curious, there is an alternate version in the bootleg circles that has Gene singing lead, which is certainly an interesting listen. Now we're going to flip the album over to side two, track six, Love Him and Leave Him. A gene composition that evolved from a demo called Rock and Rolls Royce. It's certainly a much loved deep cut, and the band must have thought highly of it to perform it early on in the Rock and Roll Over tour before being dropped and lip syncing it for Don Kirshner's rock concert. Track 7, Mr. Speed, another collaboration between Paul and Sean Delaney, and the meaning of the song itself is rather self-explanatory. It's about having the ability to pick women up quick and easy. Track 8, See You In Your Dreams, a Gene composition where the version that appeared on the album wasn't much to his liking, so he decided to give it a new lease on life by re-recording it for his 1978 solo album, but that's another discussion for another episode. Track 9, Hard Luck Woman. Alright, it goes without saying, this is indeed a Rod Stewart pastiche. Paul challenged himself to write a song like Maggie May with the intention of giving it to Rod Stewart to sing. 
Paul played it to Jean, and in an attempt to try to follow up the success of Beth, he suggested that they give it to Peter to sing, and it makes sense since Peter has that raspy, whiskey quality to his voice similar to Rod's. This was the first single released from the album, and while it didn't provoke the same amount of success as Beth, it did continue to give a band a radio presence, and the song was br briefly performed early in the tour before being dropped. Track 10, Making Love, another Paul and Sean Delaney collaboration, where musically it's Paul trying to write his own rendition of something like Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love. I gotta say, the pieces done by Paul and Sean surely are repertoire staples, and they are ones that are the most direct when it comes to the writing about the obvious subject matter, whether it's to the point or full of innuendos. As for where this album stands in my KISS catalog ranking, I would put Rock and Roll Over at the number 3 spot. Eddie Kramer really focused in on the raw energy this band had, and perhaps recording it on location within a theater helps capture that sort of live essence that KISS is known for. And the great thing about this album is that while it taps into KISS's roots, it's not like they completely disregarded everything that they learned from Bob Ezrin's recording boot camp. They kind of had to work through those exercises to grow as musicians and writers and it shows on this album it feels like a natural progression while it hones in on what made the band so unique at the very beginning you guys go that is the fifth episode of the 25 days of kissmas series stay tuned tomorrow for the sixth episode and you can already guess what's coming next along with more if you enjoyed this video please go ahead give it a like and subscribe to the channel see you guys in the next video and most importantly keep the records spinning Dogs glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow.